What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. As we dive into our Indie Comics Weekend, we are picking up with King Spawn issue number 7. We have Spawn returning where his journey began. We are returning to New York City. After his confrontation with Jason Wynn, there have been hints that Wanda has either returned or she can be returned. Not really understanding what any of this means. He's gonna go investigate and see exactly what is going on. What he doesn't know is the Court of Priests. Now these priests, they are made up of individuals that have always been foes of Spawn. Those that have gone against him and they have failed. But now they are joined together under a single cause. That is to put Spawn on his rightful place. To make Spawn the king they know he is. For him to sit on that god throne and to rule. Now, make sure you guys have liked this video, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, Spawn has returned to New York City. Arriving in this city, he finds the filth. When he arrives here, he finds a petri dish full of just infection. Of goons hired and employed by Jason Wynn. All of them working for the Exodus Foundation. The secret bank behind the group, the terrorist organization known as Palms 137. That group is why Spawn has returned. Jason had told him that Wanda could come back and that Exodus could make that happen. But one thing has been bothering him. Jason continuously was talking as if Wanda was already back, with Spawn just decimating all of these guys. Terry lets him know that this is feeling an awful lot like a trap, like they have been expecting them. Now Terry is a little bit concerned that everything Jason said may make Spawn want to try and bring Wanda back. Spawn is more concerned with the number 11 because all these goons have an 11 now on their shoulder as their patch. Not sure why they've changed it or for what reason this is. Terry loses it for a moment. He begins punching the wall, punching it until his knuckles bleed. But when he is angry, this is when he thinks the best. That is when he is the most focused. And so Spawn lets him do his thing. Let's him get angry, and in that anger, he figures it out. 137, all of those numbers together, they equal 11. 11 represents the 11th hour. In biblical terms, it is the number that denotes chaos. 11 priests working in Congress against Spawn, some of them still hiding in the shadows. That is when we are taken to the court. We are introduced to the one in charge, with him letting the other priests know that the riots, the protests, it is all about to start. Chaos is going to ensue, and Spawn will come. Now some members of this court, they were a little bit concerned that these theatrics, they aren't going to do the job. This is when our cloaked man, he grabs hold of him. He grabs hold of Mammon and tells him that he needs to sit down. That him along with everybody else in this congress, they have all failed to take down Spawn. But now that is all going to come to an end. Telling Memon that he is going to, he's going to pay for not only being a traitor of heaven, but also being a failure of hell. Throwing him onto the god throne. We see the blood splatter everywhere. And this is where we learn the identity of the leader. The one called Black Azrael. Our one-winged fallen angel. What he just did is to send a message to the rest of the court. Their leader commands them to find Spawn and deliver him to his throne. Telling the others to tend to this man's wounds. They need to prepare for what is about to come. That is what picks us back up with Spawn. Making his way to the building, he sees the protests. Both men have realized this scene is one that they know very, very well. One that they have played over and over again for years. They have watched it on surveillance tapes 
hundreds of times looking for any clues. The location may be Exodus Tower, but the visuals look exactly like they do two years ago on March 11th the day Wanda Blake had met her fate. This is when Spawn knows that they are playing as some kind of mind game. But in truth, it is so much more than that. As Terry and Spawn see Wanda's car pulling up, Terry immediately wants to go to her, saying that it might be her. But Spawn knows that it can't, that none of this is real. Someone shoots into the crowd. This starts the riot catching Wanda's car. Inadvertently, we see all the craziness break out. Every witness that had been there that day said her death was nothing more than a tragic accident caused by an overzealous mob. A sad example of being at the wrong place at the wrong time. But Spawn knows now that this was never an accident. Her death had been planned, much like the recent school bombing that killed so many children. It was executed merely to garner Spawn's attention. Because from the moment Al died, from the very second he traded his soul, Al had already known. He knew that his wife, the love of his life, was destined to die like this. All because he had been cursed with the powers of the Hellspawn. Unwilling to watch Wanda die yet again, Spawn lashes out violently. But this is only a sad reminder that of all Spawn's victories, changing the past is something that he is incapable of doing. Unable to prevent his greatest loss, that is when Black Azrael comes from the sky. The one-winged angel asking Spawn, you must be asking yourself who would dare to do this to her, revealing that it was them. They plotted her death all for the purpose of bringing him to this moment, to the beginning of his coronation, to his ascension, to becoming something more than just a mere hellspawn. That soon he is going to rule not only over this world, but he will be lord over all other worlds that he has yet to imagine. That is what takes us to the Oracle and Young Simon. This is what is referred to as Other Worlds, also known as the Green, a place of which we can only dream. Not long ago, this place, it began dying, showing a weakness, but Simon is able to see it, and it is not the only thing the Oracle is showing the boy. The boy is watching as Black Azrael and Spawn have their confrontation, with Oracle grabbing the boy from around the throat and the boy smashing her hand with a rock. The Oracle had every intention of killing young Simon, a boy that is already dead, saying that he was not brought here for safety. He was brought here to finish his journey. But that is when Gaia calls out to Oracle, the faintest whisper calling out to her, the flames coming alive, and the Oracle listening for commands. The ground trembles as flames burst apart into the pond before her. We get a revelation of the future, of what is yet to come, learning that their leader, a single winged angel, he has gone insane. Their priority now must be the safety of the boy. His survival rests with all of them. Letting Oracle know that for your sake and for the sake of everybody else, treat that child like you had birthed him yourself. Because this child is a very special one. This is when we see him making his way through the snow, seeing a giant footprint, and coming across a monstrosity, asking if this individual is a friend. The hulking giant, a monstrositous heap of composed natural discard. And if Spawn had known what this boy was yet to become, he would have ended him right there when he had the chance. Because this monstrosity, it is nothing more than the teacher. The boy, Simon, is going to eventually become the Kingslayer. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. A very interesting turn of events. Learning that Black Ezreal, he is the one in charge of the Court of Priests. But more importantly, this young boy, the one going by the name of Simon, it looks like he is destined to be the one to take down our king. That when Spawn does eventually sit upon the God Throne, 
it will be Simon's responsibility to take down the king. Not knowing where this will lead, not knowing what direction this is all headed, this prophecy foretold, we could very likely see it all unfold. That it is inevitable for Spawn to sit upon the God Throne. That it is all meant to happen, and Simon is the one meant to take the king down. But just because the king has fallen, that does not mean that Spawn has died. It's going to be very interesting to see how they play this moving forward. So let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to get completely caught up on everything going on with King Spawn, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having five different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to getting free comics every single month. Not only does this help out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you are unable to do so, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.